But before we get to next year, next weekend, we have the big game, the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm going to preview most of the game stuff this week and then, or I guess today on this podcast, and then I will talk a little bit more gambling uh, as we get to Friday, just because I'm sure everyone will have heard every single storyline there is to hear by that point, and we'll want to hear something a little bit different from the matchups and the star names. So the first thing I'll lead off with, probably already heard it, but hey, Max, did you know that this is the first ever home Super Bowl for a team? Yes, it had to happen eventually. Yeah, so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be playing in their home field, uh, hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, it's the first time that this has ever happened, and it's what a year to happen. I know, I can't believe it. Uh, they're gonna get, I think, seventy five hundred vaccinated healthcare workers in there to cheer them on. So decent atmosphere, hopefully. That's a nice uh, story. Yeah, it is. It is good, but it's definitely a PR stunt on the NFL's part. I don't really give them credit for anything <laughs> when it comes to the NFL. Uh, but yeah, cool little side bit. Maybe this gives Tampa Bay an advantage. Who knows? But it's tough to, you're going to need every advantage you need in the margins when you're going up against a juggernaut like the Kansas City Chiefs. The next storyline I want to talk about is, of course, what all the casual fans will know about this game. And that is Tom Brady and Patrick mm-hmm. Holmes, right? The goat and the baby goat. I don't even know. What do they call baby goats? Baby goats. <laughs> Calves? No. Nope. Foals? No. The horses and uh, whatever. Baby goat. Uh, that's what we're calling them. And uh, they have a two and two all time record against each other with Brady having the more signature win uh, when the Patriots went into Arrowhead Stadium and won the AFC Championship game in overtime against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Brady is set to play in his 10th Super Bowl. Uh, He's played in 18% of all Super Bowls in history. It's just absolutely astounding numbers from him. And it's something that will maybe never be achieved. But the person who could achieve it is Patrick Mahomes. Because Mahomes, yeah. That's what they call the baby goat, a kid. Nice. I like it. So the goat versus the kid. And Mahomes, if he wins this, he's got two Super Bowls and one NFL MVP after three seasons, which is about, believe it or not, that's about the same pace as Tom Brady, which is hard to fathom to just step in and be so elite right away. But when you're Tom Brady, you got to average a Super Bowl every three to four years. And and Mahomes, I think, is the only one who has ever, who's going to have a shot at it because of just how immensely talented and like phenomenal this kid is. He's an alien and it's just so fun to watch him even if he's on a division rival for my Denver Broncos. Luckily, our team is not great, so we don't have to go up against them in the playoffs. I don't mind being in rebuild mode when they're on the ascension. (laughs) But just, yeah, this these are the two that people are going to watch. Mahomes is probably going to live up to it. I I worry about Tom. I think people put him very high, but he hasn't really had a fantastic performance yet in a playoff game. He had a great first half against the Packers and then through three interceptions, he was not great against New Orleans and he didn't have to be great against Washington. So just waiting for that signature Tom Brady performance, who knows, maybe this will be it. Also on the note of Tom Brady, we have to bring up the Brady versus Belichick power rankings because those two forever had been associated with their success together and it was always, is Brady a system quarterback or is Belichick only successful because he's had this once in a lifetime quarterback? Now people will like to say that Tom Brady, even though despite he's old, he's still winning with this team and Belichick had a seven and nine record with his team. So people are starting to put Brady above Bill in terms of the uh, all-time legacy score, if you will. It was just an interesting little thing to follow. Uh, I will give Belichick a bit of a break because the Patriots had the most opt-outs out of any team going into this 2020 season. Uh, Just brutal quarterback in Cam Newton and Jared Stidham gave him nothing. And uh, on the other side, Tom Brady's got all the weapons he could ever need on offense and a really, really solid defense to back it up. Just overall, the team is better for Tampa Bay. And so, and in a weaker conference. So it is, 
you would give Brady the edge just because he's reached the Super Bowl now without Bill. But I think Belichick does have some caveats that you have to uh, consider when ranking these two against each other. Let's move on to the actual game, shall we? Uh, I know everyone's looking forward to seeing absolute slugfest from the offenses, and I don't see why that won't happen. You've got Patrick Mahomes with Travis Kelsey, who this season had the most receiving yards by a tight end in NFL history. That kind of went under the radar, but he is basically unstoppable in space. Uh, he's not as physical as some of the great tight ends who block and, and just mold people over like a Gronk, but he is probably the most athletic in space and getting open on routes for someone his size. And he does it so well. You've got Tyree Kill, who... When he's in open space, it seems like he's untackleable, as we saw in the championship game uh, against the Packers, where he just caught a crossing route over the middle and then took it an extra 40 yards downfield and made people look like they were running in slow motion. He's just so fast, and he burned Carlton Davis twice the last time these two teams played in the regular season, just made him look like he wasn't even there. You've got McCole Hardman, Clyde Edwards, Lair, Sammy Watkins, uh, Byron Pringle is like their fifth wide receiver and he is an absolute speed demon. Uh, and you've got uh, Robinson as well. Like they've just got so much speed and so many different weapons that all fit so nicely around Hill, Kelsey and Mahomes that Kansas City, like I said, they can put 21 on you in like six minutes if they get the right defensive stops. So this offense is going to roll. It's just going to be uh, if Tampa Bay can keep up and I think they can. When you've got Tom Brady, who most of the time doesn't turn the ball over, uh, Leonard Fournette, playoff Lenny, has been fantastic stepping up for the Bucks and and just providing that extra running pizzazz because for so long he had been stuck getting a ton of carries for Jacksonville. So he's a little bit fresher now because he's gotten less carries this season, so he's used to a heavier workload. So he might be uh, a little bit healthier and a little bit stronger at this point in the season. And that's what they need. He was picked fourth overall way back. He does have the talent in there some somewhere to have a great game. But if not, Ronald Jones has been excellent as well this year for the Buccaneers in the backfield. They've also got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Scotty Miller, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, Cameron Brait, like weapons all over the place. And then this kid, Tyler Johnson, I swear he's had two catches in the playoffs and they've been the two biggest catches by a Bucks receiver in the playoffs, just like huge first down conversions, um, great plays by him. And, and he is like the eighth guy that Brady's looking at. So just a battle of absolute arsenals going up against each other, weapons galore. It should be really, really exciting to watch these two go at it. But I do want to talk about the defenses because these defenses are not necessarily the top tier defenses, but they're defenses that are perfectly aligned with great offenses because they make plays when it matters. You don't always have to stop a team every time they have the ball. It's as long as you can bend and not break and then have your one or two opportunistic moments where you peanut punch a football or you make an interception off of a tip. And that's what these defenses do so well. Tyron Matthew and Chris Jones are absolute playmakers for the Chiefs, whether it's rushing the quarterback or Matthew is so great at studying film and coming up with one big interception that can make all the difference when the Chiefs offense will score basically every possession. This Chiefs defense now third straight AFC championship appearance and second straight Super Bowl appearance. They've seen it all. They're vets. They know what it takes. Uh, they've been here before, and I'm looking for them to make some big plays in this game. Uh, I don't think they're going to be excellent and hold the Tampa Bay offense under 20, but they're going to come up with the plays that they need to make, and it's whether Kansas City is going to be able to convert on those chances. On the other side, Tom Brady has a defense that he hasn't had since oh, the Patriots won that Super Bowl against the Los Angeles Rams. This defense for Tampa Bay has a young, confident secondary who's not scared of anyone. They went in to Green Bay and said, Devontae, we're going to shut you down. Lazar, we're going to shut you down. Aaron Rodgers, we don't care who you are. We're up in your grill. We're pressing at the line. And they might get burned a couple times, but they're going to come right back and do it again. And they, their secondary has stepped up in a big way. They're not scared of anyone, and they've been playing really well. And they complement the linebackers so well because these linebackers are probably the fastest in the NFL. Devontae uh, 
Levante David, pardon me, and Devin White uh, have shown out. They've been absolute studs. They all over the field, tackling running backs in the backfield or deflecting passes or just getting to those speedy guys across the middle. I worry about them being fast, but not Tyreek Hill fast, not Nicole Hardman fast. So it, it will be interesting to see how they're used and if they're more blitzing or if they're going to sit back in coverage. Cause I think if they sit back in coverage, they're not going to be as effective. They're really, really going to be need to be super duper stars in order to disrupt this Kansas city offense. Mahomes is fantastic against the blitz teams have been able to slow down the Kansas, not stop it, slow down the Kansas city offense by sitting in a lot of coverage, but Todd Bowles has brought out some great schemes so far in the playoffs. So we'll see what he does to try and get to Mahomes and, and make him rush and get rid of the ball quickly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's whichever defense can stop the run uh, and make one or two big plays is going to be the difference in this game. And that kind of completes my preview of the game itself for the Super Bowl. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the props I'm looking at as we get to Friday. Uh, but yeah, really excited for the Super Bowl coming up next weekend. Uh, and that's it for me. We're going to take a quick break and come back and do some sports that are a little bit closer to home up here north of the border. <laughs> 